Hello and welcome to Baidu's IES. Let's begin today's quiz with question number one on your screen. Consider the following statements with regards to the sixth schedule of the Indian Constitution. Number one, the sixth schedule of the Constitution provides for the administration of tribal areas in Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura, and Mizoram to safeguard the rights of the tribal population in these states. Second, the sixth schedule establishes tribal advisory councils in these states third the sixth schedule was originally intended for the predominantly tribal areas where tribal population was over 90% of undivided assam which was categorized as excluded areas under the government of india act 1935 and was under the direct control of the governor which of these given statements is or are correct the correct answer here is c One and three are correct. The second statement is wrong. Why? Because in the six schedule areas, a body called autonomous district council is formed. Tribal advisory council is a body formed in the fifth schedule areas. While the tribal advisory council is an advisory body of twenty members formed in the fifth schedule areas, having three fourth members from the state MLAs who are scheduled tribes. The autonomous district council is kind of a local government. It has thirty members, out of which twenty six are elected by the local people, while four are nominated by the governor of the respective state. The reason why we are discussing this question is because in the ongoing session of the parliament, Ladakh's member of parliament has again demanded that Ladakh should also be made a part of the sixth schedule and should be given. protection as per the provisions of this particular schedule the sixth schedule allows for greater political autonomy in the tribal areas of northeast part of india specifically under this autonomous district councils are administered by elected representatives which have a certain degree of autonomy to frame local laws for the interests of the tribal people next question number 2 consider the following statements with regards to the hypersonic technology number 1 Hypersonic speeds refer to three or more times the Mach or speed of sound. Second, most hypersonic vehicles primarily use a scramjet technology, which is a type of air breathing propulsion system. Third, the DRDO has successfully flight tested the hypersonic technology demonstrator vehicle with the capability to travel at six times the speed of sound. Which of these given statements is or are correct? The correct answer here is B. Two and three are correct. The first statement is wrong because hypersonic speeds refers to a speed of five Mach or above. Most hypersonic vehicles use a scramjet technology, and the DRDO a few months back did test a hypersonic technology demonstrator vehicle, which was covered widely in the news. The reason why we are discussing this question is because the defense minister has said. that the country must focus on developing hypersonic missiles since china recently successfully tested its hypersonic missile and that made news throughout the world at present only the us russia and china have the hypersonic missile capability these missiles travel at an extremely fast speed and are extremely hard to track or intercept that is why the defense minister has urged that in order to maintain parity with china we must focus on the hypersonic missile technology development next question number 3 who amongst the following was the chairman of advisory committee on fundamental rights minorities and tribal and excluded areas of the constituent assembly jawahar lal nehru dr rajendra prasad sardar vallabhbhai patel or g v mavlankar the correct answer here is c Sardar Vallabh Bhai Patel. He was the one who was the chairman of this particular committee. The reason why we are discussing this question is because fifteenth of December marks the death anniversary of Sardar Vallabh Bhai Patel, also known as the unifier of the country. As India's first Home Minister and Deputy Prime Minister, his role in building and consolidating post-independent India is unparalleled. This article in the Indian Express talks about a lot of his achievements. For example, his role in the famous Bardoli Satyagraha, after which he was given the title Sardar by the local women. Not just this, 
his role as the chairman of the advisory committee on fundamental rights minorities and tribal and excluded areas has also been highlighted since it was this committee that gave the final shape to our fundamental rights the author here who is a union minister of state for culture and parliamentary affairs points out that sardar patel was much more clear about the danger that india is facing from the side of china and had even written a letter to the prime minister in 1950 saying that our handling of china issue should be looked into very carefully he was also instrumental in sending the all india services as the first home minister of the country and famously called them the steel frame of india next question number 4 consider the following statements with regards to the draft food safety and standards labeling and display regulations number 1 the front of all packaged food items will have to display the total number of calories saturated and trans fats salt and added sugar content as well as the proportion of the daily energy needs fulfilled by the food item second the fss ai has changed the symbol of vegetarian food from a green circle to a green triangle to help the color blind people distinguish it from brown circle denoting non veg food third If the total amounts of calories, fats, trans fat, sugar and sodium per serving exceed the stipulated limits, it would be indicated in the red color. Which of these given statements is or are correct? The correct answer here is D since all the three given statements are absolutely correct. The reason why we are asking this question is because the Delhi High Court yesterday gave a verdict on the PIL filed by the Ram Gaur Rakshak Dal under which the court has said it is mandatory for all the food manufacturers to make complete disclosure of all the ingredients on their packaging the disclosure cannot be in any code name and they have to disclose whether or not the product is plant or animal based whether they are manufactured in the laboratory or whether or not they are natural the court also said that it is the responsibility of fssai that is food safety and standards authority of india to verify such claims made on the packaging the court said that irrespective of the percentage of the ingredient that is added in the final product the manufacturer must mention its quantity clearly on the packaging next is a previous year question from 2019 which of the following is issued by registered foreign portfolio investors to overseas investors who want to be part of india's stock market without registering themselves directly certificate of deposit commercial paper promissory note or participatory note the correct answer here is d participatory note or the p notes are an easier way for foreign portfolio investors to invest in india without disclosing their identity or registering themselves directly it makes it much easier for the money to come into the indian market without for them having to fulfill formalities such as having to register with the sebi next we have a fact of the day today and today we will be discussing about the ndps that is the narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances amendment bill of 2021 this law is recently amended by the parliament of india and it's just a one line amendment So the law was originally introduced in the year 1985 under which there was a punishment for financing illicit traffic and harboring offence. In 2014 the government made a small change saying that from now onwards if someone is dealing in essential drugs which may be narcotic in nature but the sale purchase etc of essential drugs will be allowed and it will not be punished. This provision that essential drugs will be allowed was written in section 2 sub section 8a but the problem was that in the original law there was already this section available this section section 28a already had talked about offenses which will be punished so in simple terms under one particular section there were now two things written one it was written that there will be punishment for some severe kind of offenses while the same section said that there will be no punishment for essential drugs so the problem was now people who were involved in these offenses were saying that no we should not be punished because this section says that we should not be punished under the essential drugs clause 
So this was a drafting error that happened in 2014, where two different points were written in one single section. This was brought to the notice by a district judge in Tripura in West Agartala while hearing a matter where a person was urging the judge to give him bail because Section 8A talked about not giving punishment to the people who are involved here. The judge brought this to the notice of the center government and, and the center government rectified it immediately by first bringing an ordinance and now replacing the ordinance with a permanent law. The government had also said the judge not to give bail to the person involved just because of a drafting error. So now that error has been rectified. This is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching.